These are the instructions for Plymouth Lyra 83D. These are taken from my 8th edition, which was January 1958, and it was compiled and published by Flight Lieutenant Adrian L. F. Fuller. And he was the one who was the, the main one for making all the British locomotive shed directories. So you can see it was quite a walk. The walking time was from the North Road station was about 50 minutes. And uh, from, from the Lyra Halt, which is now closed, it was very, very close. Plymouth Lyra is next on the agenda. And the instructions I've got are to follow Mullet Road down to the bridge, which is where we're at now, and follow the road round, and the shed should be on the left. Now this was a massive shed. It was a brick-built roundhouse, and also an asbestos-built four through road shed. And it was uh, 83D was the code for it. So let's see, I can already see Great Western Railway Lyra Depot. I don't know what this was like to bunk, but I don't think anybody going to do it, be doing it today. Visitors and contractors by appointments only. Stop at the pillar. <laughs> okay, well I'm only having a look not causing any damage see if we can see what's left of it Lyra was a la massive shed there's a warning sign do not trespass on the railways I think this is about as close I'm going to get actually. It's about all I'm going to get I'm afraid. Let's see if we can see anything through this gate. I don't expect to do but you never know. Well, there's a sign for it, Lyra Depot. And I wonder if this was an original cinder path to the shed, who knows. And I'm afraid that's it, so that's all we got from Plymouth Lyra. Well I haven't given up on Lyra yet. Apparently there is a footpath at the end of Brandon Road, which after a little bit of research I found leads to the line, what used to be where the shed was. So it's leading directly to the lines where the shed stood. So I don't know whether it's still available or whether it's blocked up or whatever, but we'll see what we see when we get there. Never give up. More than one way of skinning a cat, isn't there? Well, I think I found the path and it looks open too, so who knows? We'll see what we see. <laughs> I know it's in the um, middle of a big triangle, so there's one line here and there's the other line in the distance there. Just make it out there. So this is the triangle that the shed stood on. So let's have a see where this leads us. Your guess is as good as mine. Always going down some steps here. I wonder if it actually leads to the shed. You know what? I bet it does. Well, we're about to find out. Doesn't look a nice place to be anyway.
well. Follow it round. This is where the shed was, I think. Right over on the other side of that fence there. be going away from the shed now and take a look what it looks like from here there was a path look there's still a path do me any good here. I'm going away from the shed. Let's just take a look while I'm here. Yeah, that's going away from the shed. So, that's what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, so you never give up. There's, where there's a will, there's relations, as they always say. So this was, and still is, Plymouth Lyra Shed. There's two class 43s there. 43, 239 and 063. So that definitely concludes my trip for today. Once again, I want to thank you for watching. And we'll be back again as soon as possible. Bye for now. This map of the railways from Plymouth round about 1947 shows Lyra Holt up at the top. Now if you look at that, there's a triangle underneath. This is where this, the shed was opened in 1901, round about that area, and it remained as the main shed for the Great Western region after Mill Bay closed. Mill Bay is down to the left at the centre there. Now the shed is still in, op is still in open use today. It's a GWR and it's there to maintain the high speed trains. It's also there to maintain the class 150s and also the cross country class 220s and the 221s.